Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. We've got a couple of new irons to test out today and take a look at the Shrixon ZX5 and the Shrixon ZX7, new from Shrixon here at the end of 2020 uh, for golfers in 2021. Um, quickly looking at these, Thomas, they look awesome. Uh, looks like they're gonna kind of hit a wide range of golfers as well. So um, just from your kind of sneak peek so far, what do you think we'll expect after hitting some shots here in TrackMan? You mentioned they look awesome, but they also look very, very similar looking down at as yeah. well. So there's not too much of a difference between the two of them. Notice the offset now look fairly similar looking at seven iron versus seven iron. The top line looks the exact same. The length of the club looks very, very similar. The only thing I notice is the, the sole width on the ZX5 is just a little bit larger than the mm -hmm. sole width on the ZX7. I would expect, because the loft is a, just slightly strong with the ZX5 by one degree, ball go just a little bit further, spin just a little bit less with mm -hmm. that particular model, and be just a little bit more forgiving. Okay, and for the golfers that, um, well first of all, golfers that enjoy this video, please like the video and then also subscribe to our channel. Um, these are the type of things that we love to pump out to the YouTube channel. Um, and for those that haven't seen these tests before, Thomas can maybe outline what they're gonna expect from the test, how many shots we'll hit, and the shaft we're using as well. Yeah, so for this test, we're gonna hit eight shots with each model. And we're going to be testing with the Nippon NS Pro Modus 120S golf shaft here as well. Okay. Probably one X golf ball, silver dot facing up just to try to take all variables out of play. Yeah, Thomas, it should be a great test. So for golfers that um, are interested in a ZX-5 or ZX-7 set, uh, remember you can trade in your old clubs. It doesn't have to be an iron set. Uh, any clubs that you have you can trade them in either in one of our five stores or you can go online at secondswing.com and use the second swing value guide and get a nice little discount on a new set of Shrixon ZX-5 or ZX-7 irons. So Thomas, let's get after this test here. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, that's the ZX-5 in your hand. Um, when you put that down at a dress, we'll start there. Uh, what does it look like to you? And I think what, you know, maybe compared to something else in the industry or maybe just what kind of, I guess, um, look does it give you at a dress? Is it a blade? Is it game improvement? I think this ZX-5 could kind of be a little bit of a tweener there. It's definitely in betweener. It's for considering this is kind of in that game improvement category, it doesn't look like it at all. For yeah. sure, the top line looks a little bit thinner. It's not the largest of, of heads. Now comparing it to the ZX-7, it does have a little bit larger sole on, yeah. on the bottom there, but it's not massive by all means. It's a good looking, very good looking club to look down at actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, Shrixon irons are always, they look really good. Um, that's that's always been part of Shrixon's irons, uh, especially the last few years. So um, why don't we hit started some shots here and then we'll take a look at data and get some comparisons here. Good plan. I feel like that carry distance was like 197, 196 every single time. Yeah, it was, well, we can look at the map here, Thomas, and you can oh, see how <laughs> consistent that is with the carry distance that you just mentioned. So yeah. um, one thing I noticed, Thomas, uh, right off the bat when you, you know, you hit, made contact was kind of a louder sound to it, which kind of brings up that, you know, like game improvement characteristic that there is with this club. It has a lot of like the, the look of something more players, but then you kind of listen to it, then you have a little bit wider sole that does bring more of that game improvement performance to it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely loud and clicky, kind of that game improvement feel that you yeah. feel off the, off the club face, but it was forgiving in it. It went a long way, um, but right. the consistency of that carry distance, that really impressed me. And also, I mean, across the board, the consistency level right across right. the board with those four swings. Now, it is only four swings to start off with, but yeah, I mean, we should look at we're talking. Carry distance was 196.3, 197, 197, 197. So. Yeah. Very consistent. I like that. Spin consistency was good. A little mm -hmm. on the lower side. Now, that's what I would expect from a club that's got a little bit, little bit less loft right. on it. Yeah, this but is at 31 degrees. 31 degrees, um, yeah. So, I mean, that is also kind of in between. Maybe it's in the player's distance categories that we'll yeah. find out here because you know, a lot, a lot of times nowadays, the game improvement irons that come out have seven irons that are 30 or below in loft. And then you kind of get those 
the low 30s would probably be your player's distance models. So that's where the ZX-5 kind of fits in in terms of that spectrum there. I would agree. Looking at the offset, I would agree too. There's not a lot of offset compared to more of a game room and iron, so it's definitely kind of in, in between for sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, now let's get to the ZX-7, which should be a bit more of a player's uh, characteristic here. All right, let's do it. Okay, Thomas, we got four shots now with each club. Wanted to bring up the uh, dispersion here from each, and then we'll kind of go through some of the numbers as well. But first thing I noticed again is that sound. There was definitely more muted with the ZX-7. Kind of falls more firmly into that player's cavity category versus maybe player's distance to the ZX-5. Yeah, definitely that more, that true forged feel off the, off the face, mm -hmm. as opposed to being a little louder and a little bit clickier there yeah. as well. It felt really good. It definitely felt really good. A little softer, for sure. Uh, I noticed level forgiveness dropped just a little bit. Yeah. Now, I did piece together four exceptionally good shots with the yeah. ZX-5. I think it was, I said, I was like, this is going to be impossible for me to beat that <laughs> dispersion mean, pattern there. Keep, I mean, so let's just look at this right side here. So this yeah. is five yards of... I mean, it's five yards to the right of the center line, so that's yeah. 15 feet. And these are all within 10 feet of each other? Yeah. That I mean, that's, that's two yard, hundred yards down the middle, so <laughs> that's exceptional. So even getting near that is tough to beat, and then you get more of a player's type club in your hand, it's going to be tough to get that. But the ZX-7 dispersion is, I mean, all things considered, still really good. It's just yeah. that the ZX-5 it's, one is pretty tough to beat. It's going to be hard to compare. I mean, it, yeah. that's about as good a four right. swings and roll that I think I've ever put together. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's definitely saying a lot because I've done a lot of testing there. <laughs> um, so initial impression is a little bit less ball speed yeah. because the club has got one degree more loft on it with the mm -hmm. ZX-7. Um, the spin rate was a little higher. It was about 400 RPMs higher there as well. Yeah. Once again, the loft was main contributor there as well. And then I lost about five, six yards. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, that's a little bit what you'd expect, but I think just, you know, I think you usually say what, uh, one degree of loft is about three to four yards, roughly. Yep. And so a, a little bit more of a difference than maybe you would expect, but um, we'll kind of get into maybe the construction of the club and how that could impact things as well, because there is a couple of pieces in the ZX-5 that are not in the ZX-7 and vice versa. So, but we'll hit some more shots here and then we'll kind of maybe dive into those details. Yeah, the one thing I noticed looking down at it too, yeah, ever so slightly a little bit less offset than the okay. ZX-5. But the top line with both of them look very, very similar. Yeah. Actually, I believe the measurement top line is the exact same with both these two models. Okay. So we'll probably talk about it a little bit later, but the, the combo set aspect with these oh, two yeah. would be exceptional. For yeah. Sure. Actually, yeah. yeah, I mean, that blends together really well. It gets some, at least what we've seen so far, ZX-5 towards the top, ZX-7 down at the bottom of the set. Sounds like a pretty good combo set so far, but we'll go back to the ZX-5 here, hit four shots, and then uh, solidify this data. Okay. Sounds good. I have to look at that. They look pretty fairly similar looking down at. All right, that one I felt like I slightly missed it. But <laughs> Yeah, the spin rate dropped just a touch. Yeah. But that uh, maybe a little bit on the toe side. But I mean, the carry distance consistency there is going to be really hard to beat. Um, yeah, look at that. You get, <laughs> you know, you're probably, a, well, let's, let's expand it here and we'll get the actual numbers. I think it's a range from 196 to 198. Yeah, everything's in that ballpark right there. Um, and you said, I mean, the forgiveness must be pretty solid because that was one that you, right away, you're like, nah, I mishit that one. Yeah. And I mean, it might be, it's actually one of the farthest ones up there. It had a little bit of a draw uh, more yeah, than the others. Yeah, the spin but. rate dropped just a touch because I didn't quite mm -hmm. catch it. But yeah, it was pretty good across the board. And so one of the things I was talking about was materials are a little bit different. There's that SUP10 forged face on the ZX-5. 
whereas uh, in the ZX7, it's just forged carbon steel. So, um, and there's, I mean, the body of the ZX5 is carbon steel as well, but there's that extra material in there. You know, like you kind of maybe mentioned, hotter face and also provides that louder sound as well. So that's where maybe the difference, and you might feel a difference there too at impact uh, between the ZX5 and ZX7. I think that's the, maybe that clicky feel that I feel off, off the yeah. face. Uh, one thing I do want to kind of touch on is too, is I went to pick up the ZX5 after talking about the ZX7. Yeah. I had to take a, a double look, because good notice made ever so subtle, but I had to make sure that I had the right club yeah. in my hand there too. So I believe the, the length of the club is about one millimeter longer okay. than the ZX7. So it's really not too mm -hmm. different. And so. that's where a combo set can be nice because yeah. you won't even really notice the difference. You know, when you go like, with your transition from, you know, your ZX7 to ZX5 at what, seven to six iron, you're not gonna notice the difference as much where some combo sets out there can really tell, okay, now I'm playing a different iron model. And it doesn't seem like you really notice it much with these irons, which could be really beneficial. Yeah, that and also the top line looking the exact same. Right. That's going to help for sure. Mm -hmm. so. Well, let's get the last four shots here with the ZX7, and then we'll really break this stuff down. Let's do it. Might have done it. All right, Thomas, let's look at these numbers really quick. And first of all, I gotta commend you for the club speed again. Uh, it's very, very similar, so this should be a pretty good indication of uh, the performance of these clubs. But uh, you know, we've got eight shots now. Um, first quick you know, takeaway I have is the difference in the distance and the spin despite just one degree of loft difference, um, which we have always, and you've always said, three to four yards roughly, but we're seeing seven to eight here. Um, and that could be about that different material in the face of the ZX5. Uh, and also just the fact that we have probably a player's distance iron and a player's cavity, which could, you know, those are just built differently. Uh, one's built for more distance. One is more kind of built for control and workability. Yeah, I would say it's important to note because if you are trying to create a combo set, we yeah. may need to tweak the lofts on mm -hmm. the clubs just, just a little bit around to try and make sure that we have that consistent yeah. gapping all the way through. It's pretty close, but it's not quite there. So a lot of times with combo sets, you may have to make a club, one of the models a little bit weaker in loft mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit stronger to help with the gapping. It's pretty close. It's definitely yeah. not far off. Yeah, and I mean, Outside of that, you know, the spin is about 500 difference, uh, but then, I mean, the consistency distance-wise on both is pretty remarkable, right? Uh, I mean, the ZX5 was tough to beat, and ZX7 came really close, despite being uh, probably a less forgiving club head, right? Yep. I want to touch on the workability a little, workability a little bit. The ZX7, you'll notice they had like five yellow dots kind of left of the center yeah. line. Three to the right, they left the face a little bit open there, but if you look at the ZX5 I had one left of the center line, and then I had kind of seven that were yep. either close to the center line or just a little bit to the right there as well. So knowing my game, knowing I like to hit just a subtle little drawer, I was able to work the ball a little bit better with the ZX7 mm -hmm. as opposed to the ZX5, just flying pretty straight. Yeah. Yeah. The so curve. I'm looking at the curve number here, and that's, you know, it's not a, it's not a giant difference, but. Yep. 21 feet on average to 11 feet on average, uh, with I think roughly the same amount of shots were kind of with that, you know, leave the face open a little bit. Like I think there's a, you know, for as, I don't know if you're trying to do that, but I think it's pretty equal all across the board, swing speed and then kind of where the face angle was and all that type of stuff. So um, it's a pretty solid test here. We have a good indication of what, you know, you're going to get out of these clubs. Yeah, uh, let's take a look at some numbers a little bit deeper and see if, see anything else. Sounds good. Okay, Drew, we have already touched on the numbers a little bit. There's just still a very quick mm -hmm. overview of what we talked about with the differences between yeah. the Strix and the ZX5 and D ZX7. So let's just look at numbers really quickly across the board. As we mentioned, the, the club speed numbers were basically identical, so this would be a good comparison between the two, he two heads. 
The only difference between the two heads is that degree of loft. So the ZX5 is one degree stronger at 31 degrees versus the ZX7, which is one degree mm -hmm. weaker at 32 degrees. So that's part of the reason why we're seeing the bull speed numbers a little bit faster with the ZX5 than the ZX7. And we're talking about a mile and a half. So it yeah. wasn't like a major difference or anything like that. Um, but it was across the board, you could definitely kind of notice the difference. Um, if we uh, take a look at the spin rate, the spin rate was about 500 RPMs higher with the ZX7 mm -hmm. versus the ZX5. The carry distance was seven yards further with the ZX5 than the ZX7. Uh, that's to do with the loft there as well, and a little bit less spin on mm -hmm. the club, which is going to cause the ball to go a little bit further, considering my swing speed was the, was the same. Um, if we look here, the dynamic loft, this is actually, this is pretty good. Dynamic loft, 21.8, 20.8, one degree loft yeah. difference between. Now, my swing's pretty robotic, but that, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good evidence right there. This, this is a true test between the two models, for yeah. sure. So that's, that's pretty cool to see. The height differences between the two of them were, were pretty similar. The ZX5 just ever so slightly lower versus the ZX7. And that's to do with the spin being a little bit higher with the ZX7 yeah. there as well. And then the curve difference, ZX7 curved a little bit more than the ZX5. Knowing my game, I like to curve the ball a little bit to the left. Part of yeah. the reason, a little bit more workable club versus the ZX5 being a little more forgiving club. Yeah. Yeah, that's the quick synopsis there. And then one thing we didn't touch on was the VT sole, the Tour VT sole here. There's a little bit, you'll see it on both clubs, a bit more relief kind of towards uh, the back of the heel, there, or back of the, uh, the sole. And, you know, that's kind of for turf interaction purposes. But, of course, being inside uh, in winter in Minnesota, it's tough to go outside and test that right now. But that's the goal of this, and that's going to be another advantage for golfers that choose one of these iron models. Yeah, the, the VT sole is a great advantage for a player that maybe has a little bit issues with ball striking, maybe catches a little bit fat, maybe has a little bit more of a, a steeper attack angle. So it's going to help getting that club going for the turf a little bit there mm -hmm. as well. And also notice the sole notches are back with Strix on there as well. Then it's just going to help get that club to mm -hmm. kind of turf, get help with turf interaction and get that club to glide for the turf a little bit easier there too. Mm -hmm. So a player that may have a steeper attack angle, maybe four to seven degrees with a seven iron, maybe spins the ball a little bit too too much, knowing the spin rates here are a little bit on the lower side, would be a very, very good option. Mm -hmm. Both models would be a very good option because of that VT sole. Yeah, we get, you know, the ZX5 has a lot of those player's distance characteristics, I think, and then the ZX7 offers a lot of those player's cavity characteristics, and then both look great, right? We, we mentioned that briefly, but the Shrix on irons, have looked great for a while. These ones, you know, only carry that tradition on. So, two great iron models from Shrixon here uh, at the end of 2020 um, that golfers are getting this, getting a chance to look at here. So, uh, it was great to get these tests out, and I think we, you know, have a couple winners here from Shrixon. So, Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots, putting together a great test for us, and breaking down the information.